Hello and welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Geeky Sparkles, and I am not alone today. Today I have Pinky Boo with me. Hello. And we're going to talk about the Barbie movie. We have thoughts. Yay. So the Barbie movie is a thing. Um, Pinky Boo was very excited to go. I was hyping it up the most. And then she came out of it and she was like... Well, let's just say as soon as I got home, I watched a different Barbie movie to make myself feel better. Yeah, so before we get into it any further, please like and subscribe. If you do so, you'll get a woohoo. Woohoo! Do you want to give them a woohoo? I don't do the woohoos. Okay. You get one woohoo and you get judgment from Pinky Boo. <laughs> so um, let's talk about this. So we went to see the Barbie movie uh, last night. Um, I took Pinky Boo and Squid King. Squid King did the Barbie Heimer double feature. He watched Oppenheimer with his dad and Barbie with us. Um, and he said the Barbie movie was more fun, uh, but Oppenheimer, of course, you know, was more gonna be more quickly acclaimed. Uh, the Barbie movie was a thing. And I think, in my opinion, it started out really good. And it I don't think it knows what it wants to be. It was so funny, because it was like, um, it was like realistic, like how you would have played with dolls as a kid and, and then it went off the rails. Yeah. Um, the movie, okay, now I'm going to tell you up front. People are like, oh my gosh, it's LGBTQ, trans stuff. No, it didn't do that. There um, was like no, no, none of that. No, that's, that's not, that's not in the movie. That's not in the movie. It's not like that. I'm going to tell you that straight up. However, the whole feminism, toxic patriarchy masculinity is a definite theme throughout this movie and it gets annoying now i'm going to tell you before we go any further there will be spoilers ahead major so, major spoilers if you don't want to hear spoilers turn this off and come back after you've seen the movie um if you don't really care well then you can just keep listening because we're going to tell you some things that happen in the movie and we're going to talk about it and anyway so turn just, off now last warning just don't blame us if you you're upset that you heard the entire plot before you saw the movie yeah that's on you so anyway that being said last chance all right you can go ahead and talk and go and say pinky boo about it okay well i obviously had very high hopes for this movie i got dressed up for it i was super excited because barbie was my childhood I mine barbie too was like everyone's childhood yep i'm big barbie girl i used to be barbie collector yeah unless you were born like before the 30s or well, something. Well, it was like the 50s it came out, yes. It came out in the 50s. Now, if you were born before the 40s, you probably didn't grow up with Barbie. But Barbie. It, I was expecting way more from this movie, and it started out, started out so good. So good. I was so excited. I was like, oh, this is going to be my new favorite movie. It's so good. No. No, it just went downhill very fast. Yeah, it started out fun. It's like, here's what the world of Barbie's like. And it's like, if you're playing with a doll, instead of her being a real person, it was as a doll would see the world, you know, empty cups, but pretend like you're drinking things, you know, shower with no water, you know, stuff like that. My my personal favorite is um, when the girls started breaking their Barbie or their baby dolls. Oh, yeah, at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Barbie shows up and all the girls start breaking their baby dolls. Yeah, it's like a 2001 a Space Odyssey at the beginning and Barbie is the monolith and it was pretty funny. And talk about how much Barbie meant to everybody. And they, they, they had this idea that Barbie world showed girls how they could be anything, which it's true. Girl, When, we, when I grew up, the, the commercial was we girls can do anything, right, Barbie? And it's like, I never, I can honestly say, I never thought I couldn't do something. Um, Partly because, you know, the toys we had told us we could do whatever. Uh, my mom used to run the airport, for pity's sakes, and was an FBO. And she, uh, you know, we never were told we couldn't do something. It was basically, if you want to do it, you can do it. I, I do feel like I was lied to, though, because I was told it could be anything. But when I went to the sperm bank, they said I couldn't <laughs> donate. <laughs> well, it depends. Now, some girls can. It just depends. True. Anyway, um... It's just, you know, the whole idea is that Barbie world is like the real world where women can do anything and they uplift women and women are empowered because of Barbie is what the Barbies think, supposedly. But, you know, because it's a, a movie about feminism, that the real world isn't that case and it's all full of misogynistic men and keeping women down. 
And, you know, and, and what got me, I don't know about you, Pinky Boo, what got me is they start out fun, but it becomes clear pretty quick that the Kens are kind of treated the way that they say women are treated here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, as, as the movie itself put it, um, basically any role a man is considered to have in the real world is what the Barbies did in the fake world. But of course it was exaggerated, so men were in all places of power in the real world, which isn't true. And I feel like that's discrediting women who worked really hard to get there. That's right, that's my girl, yes. Yeah, exactly. They, they do make it out like, you know, the women, they had women doing construction worker jobs, women doing like their president and everything else. And the thing is, in the real world that happens. There's a lot of women who do all these things, you know? But then by them saying that, you that. They took jobs of power that men normally held it implies that only men hold power, and that's not true. Yeah, it's also, it's kind of giving a message that the only world where women are ever going to have power or be equal-ish to men is in a fictitious world, and it kind of discredits the whole movement in a way. It, it makes it seem like we've never gotten anywhere. I know I'm so proud right now. You should sense my pride. I'm making little finger hearts at my daughter. I'm like, yay, my daughter's awesome. Anyway, um, so, yeah, it, it really, truly did. I know there's one part that Pinky Boo was really offended by. We're going to talk about, like, how it got there. We can, we can talk about that later. Though, oh, okay, we'll talk about it later. Okay, so it starts out like, yeah, you're in Barbie World, and, you know, she's in the car, and the car drives itself because, you know, it's she's a toy. And yeah, then, my favorite part is when she floats down from the roof. Yeah, it was cute. They don't walk anywhere. And then they're talking about how, you know, go they go to the beach and, you know, and basically these Kens, yeah, they're just there. They're just there because they're made for Barbie. And they're only pretty much, they're only, their existence pretty much is just to be, you know, there for Barbie. And they, they mention that. And then she starts having these visions of, you know, existential crises about death and all that stuff. She's at her party. And you notice at the party, uh, Pinky Boo, that all the girls had different dresses on and were all dressed fancy. Yes, and all the men were dressed exactly yes, the same. Yes, exactly. We didn't even talk about that part. Yes, they are all dressed the same. Like they had no, you know what? A real Barbie stan would know that Ken had fashions too. Yeah, and they didn't include that until later when they were naming the fashions, but we'll get to that. Yeah, and no, it was cool. It was cool to see the different Barbies. You know, they had different Barbies they were showing and flashing on the screen yeah. that were older Barbies from the past. They I had, thought that was pretty neat. They had discontinued ones. They had Skippers. They had, like, Skippers Treehouse and stuff. Even They had Midge, which I will say about Midge is that, okay, I... They had a whole poster for her, but Mitch says literally nothing in the movie. Her whole purpose is for people to walk by her and be freaked out that she's pregnant. Right. So what's the women can't the women. be pregnant? I guess. I know, and it's, and and that's another message. Did you get the message that mo being a mom's a bad thing? A little bit, because you know, I think part of it is also because the daughter was so horrible, and like the mom character in the movie just seemed so fed up with everything. And, like, any time they mentioned about being a mom was, like, a strong thing to do because they have to do a lot, right? They immediately discredited it by saying, you know, but you don't have to be a mom either because feminism, you can do what you want. Right. You can do what you but want. But you can but, do both. But moms are just as strong as career women. You, but they a, lot do a, women, lot. a lot of women do both of them. Yeah. And I mean, can we talk about moms who do both? Yeah. And the thing is, like, they said, like you said, they kept making her like an ornament, like she's pregnant. So we, did, she was the weird one. They discontinued her. I, I'm like, cause she's pregnant. I do. Okay. To be fair, when Midge came out, I know Barbie the, was. I I know I have to clarify for everyone listening. Barbie was a teenage model when she first started, so her friend being pregnant was a little weird. But the fact that that was her only thing was being pregnant didn't feel very feminist to me. She was only seen for. Being a child carrier. Yeah, for re reproductive, you know, yeah. 
But they don't have, they, they have making jokes about how they don't have parts, which is true. They don't. I mean, there were some jokes in there that, yeah, I can see them being a little bit adult, but they're still kind of funny. And then you have that. So, so then she starts having these crisis, crises and then her feet go flat and she starts being like not Barbie-esque and getting cellulite because, you know, oh my God, that sucks. Oh, because cellulite's horrible and women shouldn't have it. Right. Well, she's a Barbie, so she shouldn't. And then basically, long story short, they go see Weird Barbie. Which Weird Barbie looks the way Weird Barbie does because she was played with too hard, which was actually pretty funny. Yeah, I I love Kate McKinnon though. Yeah, Weird Barbie so was like I'm, one of the I'm best biased. parts of the, of the of the movie actually, and so the, the the crisis at hand is that the real world and her girl um, being sad is crossing over into Barbie land and making Barbie weird. Which we should clarify, the girl thing is because the Barbies are actively being played with, and her girl it's was also depressed. Dirty. Yes. And you think it's going to be this woman's daughter. And shocker, but not shocker. I saw it coming from the moment they saw it. She came on the screen. It was her, the mom. It's, she's the one that's the girl, not the daughter. But yeah, so Barbie goes to the real world to fix the problem. And Ken sneaks along for the ride. Now, I want to point out something. Barbie in this, the, the Kens are really treated like dog crap. Like, they are basically an object. Like, when Ken says he wants to stay over or hang out with her because, you know, she's his girlfriend, he likes her, she's like, but it's girls' night, and it's all about, you can go away now, leave, like, you're you're just an object, not a person. Yeah, and I would also like to point out that um, even the Kens have petty cat fights between each other. Are you saying women are just petty and are always fighting? Because it's supposed to be opposite of what the real world is. I guess, yeah, it's implied. So there's a lot of, they, they didn't think some things through. But yeah, they don't treat Kens very well. Kens are treated like they're non-people. Like they claim women are treated in the in the world here, which we, they're not even treated that bad. You no, know? they're not treated, well, I mean, I'm sure some are, but like they're not, okay, this takes place in L.A., I'm sure women aren't treated as bad as the Kens were treated in that movie. Yeah. Maybe in another country where they still view women horribly, but not in Los Angeles. Oh, no, you'll be canceled immediately. And it's all about trying to look like you're, you're all, you know, on the side of the righteousness and on the side of, the, of, the, of good. You would, they wouldn't be acting this way. So they come through this series of events. They have to take these different vehicles, mostly so they can show the vehicles that Barbie has been part of. It was fun, though. It was cute. Um, and that was all, this is all, this is all the fun part. Okay. This is all the good part so far. And then, then she comes to the real world and she brings Ken with her. And, and then they get to the real world. They're in their nineties skating outfits. And then people are making fun of them and they're hitting, you know, they have like, you know, guys like laughing at Ken. Some guys were winking and hitting on Ken. And then, but all the men were being like, you know, slapping Barbie in the ass and acting like she's an object and, and everything else. And I was like, you're not likely going to go out on the beach and get some weird guy come up to you and slapping you on the ass. Yeah, no. Not if they want to keep their hands attached to their bodies. And then she hits well, him. She, and then she did punch him. She punched him and then she gets arrested. Why would she get arrested? Yeah, no, he it, hit her. It, he touched her first. It's Yeah, she got arrested even though it's under self-defense. And I didn't see that guy anywhere in the county jail. No. And I'm just like... And why was Ken arrested? He was just with her. He didn't do anything. Yeah, he didn't do anything. He was just like a bystander. And I think it was just so they could have that funny scene where he's posing because he's supposed to be stupid man yeah he's supposed to be, yeah he's a himbo he's an idiot and then she gets arrested again later you know and and she has more clothes on they make the police making comments like oh she's even hotter with more clothes on cops wouldn't be sitting there telling you that i'm like yeah, come on this is stupid so they have to make sure that all the men every every dude they show is a, is a narcissistic egocentric misogynistic pig which is not even indicative of the real world I mean, they're not all like that. I can just tell you for a fact that there's more men that aren't like that than the men that there are. I mean, yeah, again, some men are, but they were acting like every single yeah, exactly. person was out to get Barbie. Yeah, because they because she was a girl and she was hot, so she owed them something. Now they did have one scene where she was sitting on a bench and there was an old lady there. And Barbie, you know, the whole time, she's being like she's not mean or not being a jerk. You know, I, I don't think she's gonna be mean to Ken uh, intentionally. 
But she was like to the woman about how beautiful she was, like, because Barbie's job is to uplift women. That's what Barbie's supposed to do. That's what Bar this Barbie thinks that she's doing. So she's in the real world thinking these women are like going to, you know, worship her and be thankful. And she sees women, you know, even an old lady, and she's like, you're beautiful and trying, and she's uplifting her and being kind. And I think that 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 was a good message, but they lose it. Like, I don't even know what the message in this movie really is. It keeps changing. So she finds the, the woman's daughter and... Pinky Boo does not like her. Oh my god, her name's Sasha. I hate her. She, I think she's supposed to be younger than me, but I hate her. Oh, she calls Barbie a fascist and a bimbo. Yeah, and she's like going on about you know you're what's wrong with the world and everything else. And that is not what's wrong with the world. They're making it seem like a doll is the center of patriarchy. And you know what? Patriarchy goes a lot deeper than that. If you want to make a movie on an actual issue, you'd have to go back a long time, way farther than Barbie to see where the actual issue started. Well, Barbie came from a, 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 a doll that was bought by men overseas. It's like, a, you know, but she a, was made la, by a woman. Right. Ooh, la, la, doll. And the woman came here and took that concept of a doll just because she wanted a doll that was more realistic and body, not a baby doll, which is how they started the movie. And she turned it into a doll that girls could play with and that, you know, could be representative of them and they could have careers and things and not just see themselves as a mom, as in the yeah. kitchen. The whole idea behind Barbie was a feminist thing. Yes. But it was, but they brought in Ken because he was a boyfriend and she has friends and she has friends that are guys. And Barbie was never about showing men and teaching them that they're they're shitty and they belong there and their place and all that. But anyway, so long they go over here and then in this in this in this all going on, Ken is being treated with respect in this world. Like guys are saying hi to him and they're seeing him and he feels acknowledged and he feels seen. And he um he gets the wrong idea about what patriarchy is, apparently. He thinks it's about horses. Yeah. But anyway, he's like, thinks because he's a man, in this world he could do anything like Barbies do in the other world. Just because I'm a Barbie, I'm suddenly qualified to do something. You know, I'm this kind of Barbie. Which I want to point out, Margot Robbie is stereotypical Barbie. So she's just yeah. there to be pretty. She's not... They don't even say, like, Barbie Barbie or, like, the Barbie as in, like, the face of Barbie. Nope, they just say stereotypical Barbie. Yes. And all the she other Barbies. She doesn't have a job. She's all, just Barbie. Yeah, she's just Barbie. And all the other Barbies are just good at something because they, they, they're, I'm President Barbie. I'm, you know, Construction Worker Barbie. I'm Dr. Barbie. And immediately they're automatically good at it just because they're who they are. So Ken no, comes from that, thinks that he's going to be, like, good at whatever just because he decides it because that's what happens over in Barbie land. Well, he ends up taking the, the, the message of patriarchy that he's misunderstanding extremely back to uh, Barbie land. Now, I know one part really annoyed you when he went into the place asking for a job. Oh, yeah. So he went to the place asking for a job, and he didn't have any qualifications. And the guy was like, we're equal opportunity hire. And Ken was like, you're doing patriarchy wrong. And the guy was like, no, no, we're actually doing it quite well. We're just good at hiding it. And I'm like... There's no company ever. I know. I'm like that. No, no one's going to say that. So he goes back to Barbie Land. Now, in the meantime, there's a whole back. I don't even know what the story with Mattel is supposed to be. Like, what is the, you're thinking the whole story is going to be Barbie comes to the real world. Mattel has to get her to put her back in the other world. No, like they, they go after her to catch her. And they try to put her back in a box. Like, you can't put Barbie back in the box. And then they're chasing her, but they really have no effing point. Like, they really don't have a point. Did you find a point with them? Other than introducing Ruth? Um, the... other than being stupid man and introducing Ruth, no. Yeah, there was no other point to it. But you know, it's Will Ferrell, so I'm going to eat it up. Yeah. <laughs> well, he was he's Will Fer Ferrell in pretty much every movie. But yeah, so she ends up meeting Sasha's mom. And she has a name, but I can't remember what her name is. I, I don't even remember. They said what it was. There's a name. doll of her, but I can't remember what her name is. Anyway... They meet her, which is America Ferreira, and they end up like, you know, she's a mom and her daughter treats her like crap and she's miserable and her husband, her, while she's working hard, her husband's sitting at home, like doing Duolingo, trying to learn Spanish. He's and, really horrible at Spanish. And he's horrible. And he's sitting on a couch at home doing nothing. Because, you know, she's working her ass off and he's a lazy guy he at home. He doesn't have a job. Right. So they try to they, they they save Barbie from Mattel and they 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 go to Barbie Land with her and Mattel decides to follow all these men decide to follow to Barbie Land and when Barbie gets back there with Sasha and her mom the um, 
all of Barbie Land's been taken over by Ken. And they're all drinking brewskis and they took over all the dream houses. Cause you know, Ken didn't have a house. He just disappeared. No, they were they were Mojo Dojo Casa houses. Yes, Mo- Mojo Dojo Casa houses. But yes. I would also like to say if word of the patriarchy was enough to crumble your government so fast, there was issues besides the patriarchy horses in the first place. Yeah, that's what, that's what happens. When they get there, all the Barbies are serving the Kens. And these Barbies are supposed to be like Nobel Prize winners, astrophysicists, you know, the president and intelligent women. They suddenly are, you know, subservient to Ken. And the reason they give is absolutely fucking stupid. Sorry, sorry, Pinky Boo. The reason they give is because he said, like when, when the white man brought smallpox over and that people had no defenses against it because Barbie's always been, you know, ultra in charge woman. She's never had to be subservient to anyone. So she didn't have any defenses against the brainwashing of Ken, which I feel like is insulting. uh, Yeah. I feel like, I feel like racism and the bringing of disease that killed a lot of people. I feel like that is a lot more important than dressing girly and serving brewskis. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, you're equating that to the smallpox wiping out of people is the same as Barbies being suddenly being brainless bimbos because Ken shows up and they're serving Ken. And then, so Ken is now in charge and, and because of the patriarchy he that, that the one Ken brought with him, that all the Kens now have the houses and they have the power and, you know, Barbies are all serving them and they're all, they're all brainless bimbos now. They're just, just to fall over Ken. And it's the opposite. It's, it's basically the same thing, but in reverse of what they were dealing with. They were the himbos for Barbie. Yeah, they just made them dress like extra girly. And I'm like, what's wrong with being hyper feminine? There's nothing wrong with it, except for Hollywood. Does when that people mean tell you stupid? can't be. Apparently. Even though there are hyper feminine women who, who are very, very intelligent. Take, take the um, pink lawyer, for example. She's an attorney and she's basically like Elle Woods. Her entire office is pink and she wears only pink. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. And she still does her job and she's still smart. You can you can be both. So they have Barbies there and they're serving Ken's. And now at one point he did say to her, you know, when she's upset, he's like, you know, it doesn't feel so nice, does it? And okay, and there you had a teachable moment. There, you're like, okay, oh, this is what they're going for. They're like, it, you know, because Barbies were teaching, were treating Ken's like that, and Ken's are treating Barbies in kind, and they wouldn't have gone so far if they weren't already treated like non people to begin with. You know, their job is just beach, and they just stand there. You know, and this is the response to it by going the whole extreme the other way. So the the lesson you should learn, which is what we talk about all the time on the pop culture stuff is, okay, well, there's lessons here. Instead of one extreme or the other, we need to meet, get together and meet in the middle and realize that, you know, hey, there's compromises that can be made here and you both can be valued and you both can have your place and everybody can be seen and you can have, you know, a nice compromise that puts it in the middle where most people are. No, no, that's not what they go with with this. That's not what they do at all. Like, you have a second near the end of the movie where you think, oh, they're finally going to get equality because Barbie has, like, this whole speech because Ken feels like he's just an attachment to her, which he kind of is. He was made for her. Um, and, and she was like, maybe it can be it's Barbie and it's Ken instead of Barbie and Ken. Yeah, but that, that comes later. So we're going to get to that in a second, but you're right. What happens then is, so they go to... they they. They, well, they first of all, the, the mom and the daughter try to leave to go back to the real world. And this is where Alan comes in. And Alan uh, is like one of the best characters Alan in the Alan is whole. my favorite part of the movie besides Weird Barbie. Yeah, he's like he's like the only one because he wears Ken's clothes. He's Ken's friend. It's like Everybody's like, hi, he's Ken, Ken's hi, buddy. Ken. Yeah, hi, Ken. And then there's just Alan. He's and, like, hi, Alan. Yeah, it's just, just Alan. But Alan has a mind of his own and Alan wants to escape too because he's only, he's only part of it. My favorite part is when he starts killing all of the Kens. He wasn't trying... killing. He was beating them up. Oh, no, did you not see the one scene? He had a br- he had like a shovel and he was like, it's okay, it'll be over soon. <laughs> and then Ken falls to the ground. I thought he just like made him unconscious. Maybe. In your, mind, in, the, in, the, in your mind, he killed Ken. Anyway, so Alan is actually a pretty good part of the movie. He's actually one of the, one of the highlights. And that's an appreciation of Alan, the unsung hero. I would agree with that. He and we Bar- Weird Barbie are like, you know, two again, of the best parts of the movie. Again, biased. 
I'm a Scott Pilgrim fan, so I, I love Michael Sarah anyways, but you know, I, I still love Alan. And then he, he and then they decide to turn back to go save Barbie and he's like, I'm never getting out of here. <laughs> yeah. He said that, that it was an in sync, they're all Allens or something. Yeah, and he's like, Yeah, even Alan. <laughs> so he they go back and they're gonna because Barbie's given up and they take her to Weird Barbie and that's where they have all these discontinued dolls. They had um was it Magic Ear and Ken? Magic Ear and Ken and Growing Up Skipper. Where her yeah, well, they made expand. They made she turned her arm, which was a real doll, and her boobs, her boobs popped out. That was actually a thing. Um, they had some different. They had some different dolls that were discontinued. Oh, they had Sugar's Daddy, the cat. Yeah, yeah, because they they didn't say Sugar's Daddy. They said Sugar Daddy to make the joke, but it's. The father of Sugar the Cat. Yeah, so they had different dolls that they discontinued, and they're helping too. So the Barbies, okay, so they, 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 but how they get unbrainwashed, how they get unbrainwashed is the mom character sits there and talks and, and lectures everybody on how shitty it is to be a woman. And there are some valid points in what she's saying. Some of the things she's saying is true. As a woman, I can tell you, it is true. But I gotta tell you too, this whole idea. Some of the cattiest damn bitches you ever run into that are the, the most judgy, harsh on other harsh on women and everything else are other women. You know what? I, I definitely think one of the catty people would be Sasha. She was so horrible. She was. To every girl she interacted with. She even said, men hate women, women hate women. And I'm just like... That is a you problem, because as a woman, I don't hate women. Mm -mm. That is a you problem, Sasha. But I can tell you from being on the internet, the when, the most shit I've ever gotten about, like liking Star Wars or you know being a, 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 a not the right kind of feminist because I'm married, have been from other women. They always blame it on men. They always keep saying it's misogyny and patriarchy and these you know you know alt right. Man, not macho men dipshits and yeah sometimes you know actually though the ones who give me the most shit are, are men that are supposed to be the 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 uh you know the enlightened liberated yeah men. the liberated enlightened uh, feminist men who tell me i'm not a feminist because i don't like this i don't know i don't like a, a, a quote-unquote strong female character who's a shitty character because that they're, they're told that you're supposed to like her because feminism and they tell me i'm an internalized misogynist i'm like yeah I, I would also like to point out that typically, not always, of course, the liberated men just pretend to be feminists so they can get into feminist pain. Yeah, okay. That was not coming from me. I didn't I didn't teach her that. Well, no, I've just as somebody who grew up on the internet, it's very clear to see that they only do that to get into pants and behind closed doors they're probably even worse than yeah well they are because they're telling women who don't agree with them they step over women who don't agree with them and, and then and then tell, tell them that you're not worth my time or i'm not ignoring you or you're an internalized misogynist and i'm like you're a, a fucking douchebag sorry you're a, a effing douchebag and everything else and i'm just like it makes me so mad this whole fakeness but the women um I got more crap about not being feminist enough by other women. I've seen women do the most catty things. Like women, sometimes they dress up for men, but a lot of times they're trying to look pretty so they don't get mocked by other women and made fun of and bullied. And these and women are catty, catty bitches. Not all of them, but a lot of them are. They're super, super mean, and they'll mock you for everything. Like, I try to compliment people. If I see them with cute hair or something, I'll be like, oh, I like your hair. I like your bag. I try to get a compliment because I know what it's like to feel insecure all the time and to look like, you know, like I do and think that, you know, if someone would just say something nice about me, it makes my day better. So I try to do that for other women. But there are so many people out there, set, especially with this influencer culture now, set to tear other people down. Mm -hmm. And I would like to say that one of the women that was actually the nicest was Barbie, but she's just horrible and makes people feel bad about themselves, right? Right. She was nice to everyone. Like when they had Margot Robbie as Barbie, she was being nice to everyone. She was telling other women, other women they were beautiful, stuff like yeah, that, because was, that's what Barbie's intended to do. Yes. She was sitting, she was sitting on a bench and she looked at this old lady next to her and she was just like, you're beautiful. And the old lady's like, I know. It was cute. But yeah, Barbie's, that's her job. Barbie was here to give women... Um, and I, that, I, know, I don't know why people hate Barbie so much. She was brought out to give women, girls, a doll that was different. That they could see themselves other than mom Barbie. And I get that. Nothing wrong with being a mom. But they keep making that out. Like, being a mom is a bad thing. 
I used to play with dolls and my dolls had kids and I wanted to be a mom. But that's me and some women don't want to be. And that's cool too. But I never thought I couldn't be whatever I wanted to be. And Barbie, like, I'll tell you what, my favorite, one of my favorite Barbies ever was astronaut Barbie. I didn't get her, but I really loved her. I wanted her so much. I wanted to be an astronaut so bad. Like when I was a kid, I, I, space was like my thing. I remember being, when Challenger exploded, I remember being in elementary school. And my one teacher, who happened to be one of the teachers that were in the running for that, by the way, he uh, he asked us, he said, you know, who would still go? And I was the only one to raise my hand because I'm like, go space, hell yeah, me. You know, I wanted to do it so bad. I, I And I never thought I couldn't because there was a Barbie can do it. I can do it. They had day to night Barbie. She was a career woman. But she was also, you know, smoking hot and could party in the evenings. I'm like, hell yeah, I can do it all. Yeah. And I would like to point out that Barbie isn't a mom. She's a career woman. She but she could be if you wanted, wants. if you could yeah, be. You can you can play with her to make her be a mom, but her whole focus is that it's girls can do whatever they want and they don't have to be locked in a box of a caretaker position. They can if they want to, but they're not they don't have to. Right. But you can do it you could and you can do anything you want to be. So it was really, you know, I don't know, they're trying to say this one message and Barbie, yes, was a feminism tool, but feminism that's something else. Ultimately, another thing, key point is what is feminism? Because what feminism was and what feminism has become are two different things. Feminism was equality. Feminism was women could do what men could do, and you know, and things like that. And it was just about being treated equal, being seen as an individual, being seen as you know valued, having positions of power, things like that. Now it's become this intersectional feminism, which is complete bullshit all men are evil and this movie leans towards that more and i don't think that's really fair because that's not what barbie that barbie is a tool of feminism yes but in a positive way and an old school feminist anyway so the the, the back to the brainwashing this is gonna be a long video back to the brainwashing so the barbies are brainwashed and they have her lecturing them on what it's like to be a woman and by doing that it snaps them out of their brainwashing so what they do is they have to get every barbie unbrainwashed to take over because they're gonna they're gonna overturn the constitution and make it ken land instead of barbie land and no, no, no. ken dumb oh ken dumb um, ken dumb land ken dumb, ken dumb land and so they have to what they have to do is because the kens are so egocentric and and and, and assholey that they're so self-absorbed they can't re they can't resist the damsel in distress so i want barbie plays stupid so the ken can mansplain her uh, they sneak the other Barbies out to, uh, to deprogram them. Uh, why they? Why the other Barbies are pretending to be dumb so that Ken, you know, can mansplain them about everything. Yeah, like they make digs at the Godfather and they make digs at Zack Snyder's yes. Justice League. And I've personally never seen that movie. But as somebody who's always been a DC fan, that kind of hurt. Well, they were like, yeah, because, you know, only men like the Snyder cut. I'm like, I'm sorry. Last time I checked. I've got tits. Yeah, got a vagina. Check. I like the Snyderverse. I thought the Snyder cut, the Snyder cut was much better than Joss Whedon's cut. Joss Whedon's got in trouble for trolling on women. And I would just like to say that you're right, Mom. You do have a vagina. That's I, the I whole clearly, point. Barbie doesn't. That well, until no. the end. Yes, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna talk about that. So guys, listen to this. Like, wait, Barbie's got a vagina now? No. So, yeah, so they deprogram the Barbies and then how they get the Kens distracted so they can make sure they keep their constitution is they, they all see with the Kens like they're interested in them. This is actually just cruel. So the Kens are thinking like, you know, they're, they're, they, uh, they're all like in lockstep singing the same song and they got each one has a, a Barbie with them. And they're thinking, yay, you know, they're, you know, I'm dating. The, I always wanted to date Barbie. Now I'm getting to actually date her, not just be an accessory. And they're singing to her. And, and, and then they try to, to play out their jealousy by hitting on other Kens in front of them to make them mad at each other and not be united and to be because their egos will be hurt. They actually said that. And that they'll fight each other. And they'll be fighting and, and each other while they can sneak in the back door and take over. And I'm just like, this, this is setting back the movement because it's portraying women as toxic and catty and unfaithful which we've been trying to break that whole stigma but then they win by doing that by being exactly what yeah so the kens fight each other and it's actually pretty funny the fight scenes are pretty funny and then they have like yeah. a musical number where they all decide that they're enough and they're marching arm in arm to back to the pink house. Yes, the White House is a pink house. To, to stop the Barbies. They're now celebrating because they stopped the Constitution being changed. Um, 
And the yeah, so the Barbies are taking over and the Kens come back in. And then, yeah, we have the whole thing with Ken not thinking he's enough and he wants Barbie. But Barbie doesn't love Ken. Barbie never loved Ken. Barbie just wants to do her own thing. Um, and she shouldn't have to love Ken because they're making her. As the movie states, Ken can't have a good day unless Barbie looks at him. But every day is a good day for Barbie. Right, but that's okay. And then it goes basically goes back to that at the end. Except the the Mattel guy says, "Let's put it all back to where it was." And then then the president of Barbie's like, "Well, not exactly how it was, you know." And we about thinking they learned a lesson, like, "Oh, you were treating Ken's way, mm -hmm. we were treated, and we don't like it." That's what you're thinking. They really made it think like they really made you think they were going to finally have equality and a good balance for once. But Throw it away in the next second. Yeah, then, then she's like, the, the, the Ken's like, can we have a, a, a Supreme Court seat? And she's like, no, but you can have a lower court judge or lower court seat or something. And then the narrator's like, what did she say exactly? She said, maybe one day the Kens will have a, the same amount of power as women do in the real world. And I'm like, are you saying that women can't get into the Supreme Court? Because I assure you they can. Yes, and they have. So it was, it was really, it was, it, I don't think it knows what it wants to be. It started out as such a, a, a fun idea and it had so much potential. And then they had to, to, to take the second half and make it feminism plus. Oh, and then you can tell the joke about you hated about the physicist. Yeah. Okay. So one of the, one of the people that I'm brainwashed is physicist Barbie. And she, she's like in a maid dress or something. I don't even know. But she, Snaps back to reality, I guess, and she's like, "What am I wearing? I would never wear this." And and America Ferrer is like, "Yeah, it's because you're a physicist. You want some pants?" And she's like, "Yes, yes, because you Physic can't wear a skirt if you're a physicist. Physicists can't be girly. You heard it here, folks. In order to be serious, you can't like fun things." Well, it's like it's like almost in a way they're shaming girly girls too. You yeah, know? there are so many girly girls in professional positions. And the fact you're making it seem like we can't do that is kind of offensive as somebody who's very girly. Well, I, yeah, I can tell you for a fact that Pinkie Boo is very girly and I can be very girly as well. And I, we both love Barbie forever. I mean, one of the first dolls that she got was Barbie. I grew up with Barbie. My mom grew up with Barbie. Um, I, Barbie was my favorite toy I when I was a kid. I had a weird Barbie at one point. Then yeah. I regretted having a weird Barbie and I never had a weird Barbie That's again. true. When, when Pinky was little, she got one Barbie and she drew on it with a pen and we couldn't get the pen off. And she was so heartbroken that she made that Barbie weird that she never, ever, ever damaged one later on. And that, that kid took exceptional care of all her toys because she felt so bad about ruining that one because she was so excited about it. But um, yeah, I mean, there was so much potential here and they just like tossed it. There's some, there, was a, there was a learning moment, a teachable moment that you could have been like, well, it's not right to treat Ken that way, but it's not right to treat Barbie that way. So you shouldn't be treating anyone that way. And people, you know, just like girls can do anything, you know, as do things men can do. Men can do things too. And men, you know, they're, don't, they're not all assholes. And they could have done this and they didn't. They just left it that way. And it's like, wait, what? Yeah, it's... And then Barbie becomes human. I, I said, I, I made a joke... I was like, Barbie, become human. Oh, the yeah. only thing that she has that, her, oh, no, the only thing her creators have that she doesn't is the soul. Well, they, that's why we, we didn't leave, that's right. They, you go, I forgot about the whole ending part, which is even, so Barbie's still having her crisis and doesn't want to go back to being a Barbie. So Ruth shows, Ruth Handler shows up and, and talks to her. And then Barbie decides she wants to be human. Um, because she, she just wants to be that way. So at the end of the movie, you see the, you know, people that are there trying, the mom and their daughter and her, her, her the completely worthless husband who's speaking poor Spanish. And that's all he's doing. And the daughter's that's appropriation, dad. Yeah. The daughter's like, that's appropriation, dad. And then, um, they're wishing her luck. You think she's going to a job interview. No, no, no. You can tell them pinky boo. She went to a gynecologist. It would have been a lot more impactful if, she was going to work and she had became a very powerful person at the Mattel company because they kept making jokes about how no women in power were at the Mattel company. It was all run by men. So instead of putting her in a position of power at Mattel or like another company, no, she just goes to a gynecologist. Yeah, because now she has a vagina. She's now she has a vagina. Because she's a person. 
She's she's a vagina because it's all women are good for. And the name she gives is is Ruth Handler. She uses Ruth Handler's name. Um, no, no, she's Handler Barbara. Oh, Handler Barbara. I'm sorry, so that's she, right, so right. Took, Handler Barbie. Yes, you're right. Yeah, Barbara. so she took her daughter's, daughter's name. name. You're right. You're right. Because because the doll the doll was named after her daughter, and Kim is actually named after her son, which is kind of weird. But you know what? You're also guilty. I know this. our our, our uh, Shadowbinders book. Uh, we didn't intend it that way originally, but with Lena is uh, was named after a daughter, and and Tristan's named after our son. So, um, yeah, it was in t- unintentional. But anyway, so that was the movie. And and now, of course, you get people on Twitter. I had to slap a bitch down. David, Dave Lee here. 2023, the year alt-right macho dudes suddenly started passionately giving a, a fuck about Barbie and Disney princesses. And then uses Barbie, the Little Mermaid, and Snow White. And I was like, well, bullcrap, because uh, the whole issue with the, with the Little Mermaid was beyond the race bending. It was just a really bad movie. It wasn't, I mean, it wasn't as bad as, as other ones, but it wasn't great either. And then you have the whole thing with Rachel Ziegler and Snow White. Ziegler and Snow White. The problem is, is Snow White is called Snow White because she is white as snow. If like even people who aren't white are like, if there's one princess, you don't race bend. It's Snow White. And then the problem isn't even her. The problem is they replaced all the actors with dwarfism, you know, for other actors who are diverse, and it's caused a problem. So this dipshit is going on about that. So I said 2023, the year this dude suddenly cared about Barbie and Disney princesses because he was salty about people not liking race-swapping, marginalization of people with dwarfism, stereotyping, and double standards. But of course, according to him, it's all dudes and not women, because as he's being an asshole called about macho dudes, he completely disregards women who are complaining about the same things. Mm-hmm. Now, we should probably read some reviews. Of oh, yes. Okay, so on Rotten Tomatoes... It has a 90% in the tomato meter and 89% in audience score. On verified. So if you go to the verified audience, it's 89%. If you go to all audiences, it's 79 and it's been dropping. Um, but here are the, the verified reviews and they're very lock-steppy. Like the best movie I've seen all year. Well, that's sad. My inner child was present in the theater today and I couldn't be any happier. My child was at the theater because she loves Barbie. You know what she did? She was so depressed about the movie and, and how sad it made her. She went home and watched old Barbie movies that she grew up with. Actually, when I get home again today, I'm going to watch Princess Because we Charles kept them. Though. She loved them. She grew up with them. She watched them all the time. They, we have them on DVD. We kept them and they're on our voodoo and everything else because she loved them so much. Monster High too. Something else she loved. We have all the well, movies from. you know what? Barbie, I will say, it was still way better than the Monster High movie. Well, yeah. Monster High movie was pretty bad. It's a refreshing change. It wasn't about a toy coming to life, but a look at how we should value each other and ourselves. So we should value men lower? Apparently. Apparently. Um, you know, me and my friends loved it. It's all five star. Oh, here's a four, four star Barbie. It was okay, but it was surprising. Surprised they said penis and vagina. I thought it was inappropriate and unnecessary. Okay, that doesn't even make sense. That's not really inappropriate. It's human anatomy, and that's your only complaint with the movie? They said much worse in that movie. They, well, they made jokes a couple times. Like, like um, they had Will Ferrell making a joke about, you know, playing with little kids, but not in that way and stuff like that. Oh, my gosh. It deals with a deeper message of today's world and how women are affected. It also displays a great comedy for both children and adults to laugh at. I would not take a child to this movie. They had some really not for kids jokes that's what they're that's what they're talking about before they're talking about you know they're saying that one person don't take kids this person's like it's whimsical and childlike and they did a great job immersing the audience into a barbie experience at first yeah at first um you know there's going on about somebody said about i remember there's one review was like bring oh here fun thoughtful real bring all your male friends i wouldn't recommend it and that's something else too these people disregard the fact that there are a lot of men who collect Barbie dolls. There's a lot of men who collect Monster High dolls. I was thinking to myself in the movie when they kept like being like the way they were being towards men. I was like, but some of your audience are men. I know for a fact when I used to collect dolls like Barbies and stuff, um, there were a lot of male collectors. There really were. And I was like, you know, what about some of the designers like Bob Mackey who kept doing Barbie stuff all the time? Are they toxic assholes too? You know, it just goes on and on. So that's the verified. If you've seen it, it's four stars, five stars, four and a half stars the whole way. If you go to all audience... You get some of the four and five, but you also get, you know, it was cr- so crazy, it didn't make an actual sense, and it wasn't necessary for everything to happen to occur, to deliver that message. Um, maybe I'm being dramatic, but I felt way too silly. 
I know it's not Barbie, uh, but I, I, but I truly did not enjoy it. Only positive things are the performances of the actors. It's a dumb movie. Um, they go on, and there's a lot of five stars here too. I don't understand it. I think people are just trying to damage control because what would you give it out of five? Three stars. That's what I'm thinking, it maybe had three. a very strong start. The ending was disappointing. I didn't like it. They didn't have to make Barbie human. They could have just ended at the semi-equality of Barbie land. The, the not-equality of Barbie land is also why I wouldn't rate it higher. And just the overall the jabs at dudes, they were excessive. And some of their points came more like pick me and anti-feminist because they were they just kept making fun of Barbie herself and like girly girls as if they can't be in positions of power. But it was like, yeah, it was like they were double talking. Like they're on one side saying that women, you know, should be in charge of more things, but the other side saying that, you know, making fun of women. And it, it, I really don't think it knew what it wanted to be. And I think the message is supposed to be that you grow up with Barbie and then Barbie evolved to become a real person because like you, you know, grow up to evolve to be a real woman and all this other stuff. And I think that was the message, but it was so lost in all the other shit that I don't even know what it wanted to be. I would agree. I think three is fair. Um, I also, I don't like the fact that Ken is kind of hanging, like Barbie doesn't have to like him, but the whole point is that they both like each other very much, like equally. In all the movies and the toys and stuff, they like each other equally. In the show, they like each other equally. And I mean, maybe Ken liked Barbie a little bit more, but they both liked each other a lot. And they were dating. And in this movie, it's just like, she's just like, nope, none of that. You know, I'm not interested. And... You, uh, <sighs> The one, I, I give it three stars, too, because it was really neat to see all the old Barbie references and a lot of the Easter eggs were fun, including the outfits. Mm -hmm. Like, they throw them in the air and the outfits would just, like, stop in the air and then they'd name what it was. And that was that was actually really fun. And, and I wish I would have liked more of that and less of the narrative. But anyway, so we're going to wrap this up because we've gone for a long time today. Yeah. So, yeah, you guys have to go to work soon. So please like and subscribe and we'll talk to you later. Bye. Yeah.